Hi everyone, Mr. Thomas here. Okay, here's a question to get you thinking. In 1950, what fraction of the world's population lived within rural areas? So if you have an answer for that question, here's an even more difficult one for you to get you thinking. In what year is it estimated that that trend will be reversed, so the same fraction of people living within an urban area? The answers for those questions are in this video. So if you'd like to find out the future of our populations across the planet and what our future holds, then just sit back, relax, and let's begin. So we're looking at urbanization as part of our first human geography video. Yay! 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 What a fun topic. I. Human geography is just as good as physical geography, I promise! Yay! <laughs> if you haven't guessed already, those yays were a little bit sarcastic. A little fun fact about me is that my preference is physical geography. Anyway, we're getting a little bit sidetracked. What is urbanisation? Urbanisation is defined as the increase in populations living within urban areas in comparison to rural areas. Let's begin with factors affecting urbanisation. Our first factor that affects urbanisation is called rural to urban migration. This is where people decide that the village life just ain't for them anymore, and they move into cities. The reasons people migrate can be categorised as either push factors or pull factors. Let's have a look at the rural urban migration of the Bobinsons family. The Bobinsons have gone and decided that the sweet little village of Ruralot is not quite doing it for them anymore and they've decided that they're going to move to the city of Urbantopia for a few different reasons. Let's take a look at the reasons or factors that have influenced the Bobinsons' migration. The Bobinsons found a range of push factors. These are factors that push you away from living in a certain area. In the case of Rurelalot, there was a lack of key services like hospitals, poor transportation in the case of country lanes surrounding their village, and there are usually less employment opportunities in Rural a lot than there would be in urban areas. Either the case is that there aren't many jobs, or they aren't high paying. But now let's see why the Bobinsons wanted to move into Urbantopia. These reasons are our pull factors, or factors that pull you into living in a new place. Unlike the village of Rural a lot, there are a lot of key services in Urbantopia, such as nearby hospitals, which is good because Mr Bobinson is really really clumsy. Plus the Bobinsons are a cool young couple, just look at them. And in urban areas, there's more going on. There's more entertainment opportunity. You don't see many nightclubs setting up in villages like Ruralalot. And lastly, see that nice car Miss Bobinson is driving now? That's because there's more employment opportunity within urban areas. There's more jobs and there's higher paying jobs. So back to our factors affecting urbanisation. Our last one is natural increase. This is where more people are born than people die. So, as you can imagine, the population slowly increases. So now let's move on to trends in urbanisation. This is where you'll find out about the answers to the starter questions. In 1950, one third of the world's population lived within urban areas. And ever since then, that number's been increasing. Just look at the chart. It's estimated that by 2050, two thirds of the world's population will be living within urban areas, as opposed to how it was in 1950, when two thirds of the world's population lived within rural areas. However, the rate of urbanization isn't uniform. It's actually very non-uniform. Between now and 2050, 90% of the aforementioned urbanization is going to be taking place in Asia and Africa. Between them, China, India, and Nigeria will account for 37% of that growth. That is mad. India is expecting 404 million new urban people. Urban folk? Urban dwellers. They're expecting 404 million new urban dwellers by 2050. China is expecting 292 million, and Nigeria is expecting 212 million. So I just want to pause just for a second there and say that this little section isn't about the GCSE content, it's more so about myself and my opinions and beliefs. And I just want to say as a geographer, I'm really, really excited to see how the world's going to change the next 20, 30, 40 years even. There's lots of evidence out there saying that Nigeria is going to be the next up and coming country and that it's going to replace China as the manufacturing powerhouse of the world, which is... That's incredible, because if you think about it, every item you pick up nowadays says made in China. Even some of the best selling phones like iPhone and Samsung are made in China. And in the next 20, 30, 40 years, that could be replaced by a made in Nigeria label, which is 
it's incredible and as a geographer it gets me really excited so i hope that as geography learners and those interested in geography you'll find this really interesting too and in the next 20 to 30 years who knows there could be a massive new worldscape with nigeria leading the manufacturing race so back to the gcse content we've talked about licks and knees but let's talk about hicks or higher income countries Hicks aren't undergoing the same explosion of urban populations. In fact, they're seeing quite the opposite. The rate of urbanization within Hicks is actually slowing down. In fact, due to the high levels of traffic congestion and lack of affordable housing, people are taking this as a time to move back to the countryside. They're moving from urban areas to rural areas, and we call this process counter-urbanization. Let's take this back to urbanization. So as more and more people flock, and live in cities, we expect to see the rise of more and more mega cities. These are cities that are inhabited by more than 10 million people. There are around 38 mega cities in the world today. Some examples of mega cities are Beijing in China, Delhi in India, Moscow in Russia, New York in the good old US of A, and then back across the pond to the UK where we have London. And in years gone by, the number of these mega cities has increased rapidly, with the majority of them being in Asia. And like I've said, as urbanization continues and the urban population continues to grow, we expect to see more and more of these megacities cropping up in loads of different places. However, here's a question. Where do you think these megacities are going to be cropping up? Do you think they're going to be in Hicks, such as the UK and USA, or Licks, such as countries from the Middle East? And countries from Africa. It's estimated that most of the new mega cities that are going to be forming will be forming in Licks and Knees. So we're thinking about regions such as Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. So in the next half a century or so, we're going to be going into a really, really interesting new world. Since that new and fascinating world is around 40 to 50 years in the future, it's probably best to end the video now. So I hope you've enjoyed your first taste of human geography here on my channel. Yay! Human geography! Woo! <laughs> and hopefully we'll get to see the Bobinsons again really soon. But with that being said, as always, there is a worksheet and answer sheet down in the description below. And it's time for you to pack up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in our next lesson. Dismissed. Hi everyone, Mr. Thomas here, and welcome to the blooper section. This is a section I like to add on to the end of all of my videos just to prove that it's okay to make mistakes. As a learner, you're bound to mess things up sometimes, and that is completely fine. It's through practice that you make perfect. So, here's a montage of all the times I messed up producing this video for you today. So I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, uh, here's a question to get you thinking. In 1950, what fraction of the world are... Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. The answers are in... Why am I, play... <laughs> Why am I playing the piano? <laughs> that was so weird. <laughs> I, um... I prefer physical geography, if you haven't guessed already. <laughs> Human geography is fun. There are some really interesting bits. Just a lot of it is really dull. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that. I really can't say this. I need to be like, yeah, human. <laughs> I just can't. Oh, I need to. I need to bring my energy up because I need to. Ins like, I need to get that curiosity. I need to captivate. So, our first factor affecting urbanization is called rural to urban migration. This is where people will live in villages. Oh, almost. Almost. Okay. But anyway, we're getting a little bit sidetracked. So, what is urbanization? Urbanization is to define. Ah, uh, it did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, The reasons people migrate from. Okay. The reasons people migrate can be. Ah. Uh, the reasons people migrate can be. If I say that sentence once more. The reasons people migrate can be That was horrible. That was actually terrifying. This is Bobinsons. Why did I call them the Bobinsons for one? That is such a difficult name to say. Can I just try and say Bobinsons like 15 times? The Bobinsons. Bobinsons, 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 Bobinsons. That sounds like a sick beat then. And lastly, see that nice car Miss Bobinson is driving now? That's because there's more employment opportunity within urban areas. 
There's more jobs and there's higher paying jobs. Yes! Ho! Oh, feeling it. It's the suit. It's bringing me luck. Do, 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 do. So back to our factors in... <laughs> this is... So back to our factors. This is almost like a rap. Back to our factors, factors in revelation. Okay. We'll do a... Boosh! The transition back to me. I'll just... Drop him. Ooh. <laughs> See, it looks better after it's edited. At the moment, it's just me in front of a green towel looking like an idiot. It's not a towel, it's an actual green screen, okay? <laughs> I'm not that. This is a green screen, it's not just a big green towel. <laughs>